Hi everyone, we're very excited to be here to tell you about the Design and Innovation Club and why this club has made our FUCO experience very unique. Um, so to introduce ourselves, my name is Mariela. I am originally from Costa Rica. Um, I recruited specifically for design and I did my internship at a design consulting firm in New York called Academy. Uh, and now I'm gonna let Leo introduce himself. Hi everyone, my name is Leo. Uh, I'm originally from Venezuela. I'm a mechanical engineer and I was recruited more for tech and telecom, and I did my internship at T-Mobile over the summer where I had a great experience. Awesome, so um, just so you guys know, we're gonna run through several questions and several topics that we wanna discuss with you. Uh, throughout the session, you can submit your questions on the website and we'll get to them at the end, but you can submit questions at any point during the conversation. Um, so let's jump right into it. Perfect. Um, so the first thing we want to share with you guys it's, is what is the Design Innovation Club's mission. Um, and it is to educate students about the power of design and innovation in a fo uh, focused thinking in the business world, especially through hands-on experiential learning. Um, so we really see our, our club is technically a professional club and professional club's main focus is to help students recruit for that industry. Um, however, we see our club as very unique because we believe that design and innovation skills are relevant to anybody regardless of what industry they want to pursue after business school. Um, so we have a very diverse set of, of members in our club. We have people like Leo who uh, recruited for tech. We have people like me who did recruit specifically for design. Um, we have people who are interested in healthcare, in consulting, in finance. So our club and everything it's, is, it does it's, is very cross-disciplinary. Um, and what, that's one of the things that really excites us about our club. Also, there are some things that happened um, that ha that have happened every year. Our club is is pretty new. I think it has like five or six years. Yes. Um, and there are some things that have happened every year. So, for example, um, for the last three or four years, IBM has invited the club over to um, their design studio at RTP, um, and that happens every year. Or we do a, a workshop with with the Center for the Advancement of Social Entrepreneurship, or CASE, um, with a professor from, from the Pratt School of Engineering here at Duke. Um, and there yep. are things that happen every year. Yep. Uh, and at the same time, we have a lot of white space for its members to create and to come up with new ideas um, and to really be proactive and, and really get to, to innovate and create things that they are interested in during the year, right? So... Um, I think some other some other clubs have a more defined trajectory or a more defined path. We are we are unique in that uh, we have, as I said, a lot of white space and and space for for its members to create, which is al always pretty exciting. Right, and we do not want to think that people should uh, focus on design, with, whereas like design of the visual aspect. We want people to design to think of design from the process of manufacturing or creating the product to how you approach the customer. So design could contemplate all in between of that. That's, how, that's why we believe that this club will be very useful to someone that is doing product management in healthcare or someone that is maybe doing brand management in CPG. You will see that it was very useful regardless of what your career path. Definitely. So. Um, we want to share a little bit of our club values, our guiding principles, and, and the focus areas that we've had for this year. Right. One of the things that we feel that makes a club unique, it's the people that it's part of the club. As I say, people do not come to the club just because they want to recruit for design. It's just they want to come because they want to experience. As myself, I did not have any prior uh, knowledge about design thinking methodologies, but I did want, I was curious about it. I knew that it would help my career um, a lot, and it has, uh, I gotta say. So when we were working on the club with our cabinet, with our amazing cabinet members, we wanted to create like the core values that will guide us through the, um, through the, the club mission. So the first of our values is related to support. We really need to support each one. Um, that includes academically, that includes uh, professionally, recruiting, and uh, even like putting up the, the activities for the club. The second one is the empathy. Empathy, I will, I will say like, if you want to come to Fugua, you have all that covered. <laughs> like, 
That's very easy. Team um, <laughs> And the third one is enthusiasm. Um, I think like Mariela's the best showcase for <laughs> enthusiasm, as you will see. And that's one thing that like it, it is very important for us. Uh, positive communication. We always want to be, you know, involved with everything that is happening around the club and with other clubs. That's uh, basic for our collaborative spirit. Um, which brings me to the next one, the collaboration. There's no one, there's no communication that is effective without the collaboration that comes with it. Um, we are very committed to the club. As Mariela said, it is a young club, so it, it requires a lot of work uh, to get more traction. We, we think that people got, are very interested nowadays in the club, mm -hmm. and that's what makes us very motivated to keep on working uh, on the club. Um, and the, 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 the last one, the last two are very related because one is regarding uh, creativity, but creativity could only be effective in, a, in an environment where people feel safe and like, that's what we want to create with a, with a club, like a safe space so, so people can bring new ideas or discuss um, how to tackle different problems within uh, their community or, or, or even within their teams. And that's only possible, like, to foster creativity, you have to have an attitude of yes and. You will see when you get to Fuqua, we have a session where they teach you how the responsive, the, the, the responsive of people, when, you, when they say something and you start by yes and, that creates, like, um, a more open environment. Like, you are open to what they have to say, and you're actually listening, and you want to build up on that. That's kind of a, one of the, the values that we really... Um, put a lot of emphasis mm -hmm. on. And at the beginning of, of our term as co-presidents, we really wanted to make sure that um, that we had these values that would, would guide us through our work, especially since I said um, this is a room to create, uh, a space to create and for students to come in and really propose new ideas and take the club where they wanted to go. So we wanted to make sure that, that we had these these values um, and coming up the next guiding principles to really to really support our work um, and get us where we want it to be. Um, so we have also the guiding principles of how we will work. Um, the first one is we will think big. This we want this club and and we have seen it. Uh, design innovation is only going to become more important in the business world, and I think it's up to to the club to to really um, bring that up in the conversations uh, at at Fuqua. Um, so we will, we will always think big of what's the next thing we could do. Uh, we will be inclusive of people and ideas. This goes back to the collaboration uh, and, this, and this desire to create a safe space. So if, if one, somebody that's listening right now wants to, will join Fuqua and has this amazing idea of creating, of creating Fuqua's first hackathon, then we really want to, to support that person uh, and give them the tools and resources that they need in order to make that a reality. Um, aligned with that, we will encourage experimentation. So business school is definitely, I think, uh, a very safe space. To, to try stuff out that you didn't think you you or you didn't know existed or you didn't think you would be good at. Uh, so we want to encourage experimentation and that's very aligned with with design and, and what designers do. Um, and the fourth guiding principle is we will have fun. At the end of the day, we, we really want to make sure that this adds positive uh, things and experiences to the to the MBA journey, which can be um, can be at, at times very intense. So we want to make sure that whoever joins the club doesn't see it as, oh, this is a burden, I have to go to this thing. But this is like something really fun that really allows us to, to create new things. Um, and now we're going to go through the four focus areas that the club has for this year. Right. For the, more, uh, the four main focus areas, we have, uh, as I say, a cabinet, uh, cabinet members that will help us to navigate the different activities that we have assigned to each of them. The first one is regarding market and communications. Like this team has done an amazing job to help us get more traction within the Fuqua community. And not only that, uh, with other clubs, uh, you will see, like, as Mariela said before, like our club is very cross-functional. So we have a lot of collaboration with other clubs for events, like, for example, the tech club, uh, with the marketing club, and with the, uh, the case mm -hmm. also. Um, that's one thing that this team is, is focused on, like how to help improve our, our involvement within 
Fuqua and other clubs. Yeah. And some things that have happened this year, um, we rebranded. So you can see these awesome shirts that we have on. This is the new logo. And um, so this cabinet is also helping us for example if you go right now to our org sync it has the the old branding so we're currently working on getting all the branding across across all of the touch points that we have um on sending out information and keeping the students up to date as to the activities that are going on in fuqua around design innovation but also outside um, because there is a lot going on in the Duke community and in the broader Durham community in terms of design and innovation, and we just want to make sure that students get access to that information in a, in a quick and easy way um, so that they can participate and branch out and, and put the pieces together in a way that makes sense for them. Yeah, it, it is important what Mariela said. You will see that Duke and Durham are, is like a very important hotspot of entrepreneurship, and there's a lot of going on, and there's where you will see that our newsletter can bring sometimes like information for the few students that they m might not have access to, like the innovation collab or or what happens at the bullpen at Duke, it, which is like very important activities that could complement what the the students at Fuqua are looking at. Mm -hmm, definitely. Um, so the second area is uh, create and connect. Uh, we call it that, but it's like community building events. So we just want to make sure that we demonstrate the value of design innovation. Uh, by seeking opportunities to act as a catalyst for positive um, change and community building at Fuqua. Um, we have several events. So one of the things that was really cool about this space is that uh, this is something that the team came up with that we really wanted to do. Um, and the way we went through this is we had uh, an, ideation, uh, an ideation session, right? Because we really want to practice what, pre what we preach. Um, so the people in charge of this, of this space, we had an ideation session where we came up with a lot of different ideas and then we voted on them and we prioritized. Um, so it, so it, it gives a space for students to create new things. Um, and we're, we're very excited about the things that are, are going to happen this year in terms of this space. Right. Uh, the third focus area is experiential learning. Um, we truly believe that this kind of knowledge, the design thinking and specifically methodologies, are not something that you could just sit and listen to a lecture and just learn it. I think it's, it is something that you have to learn uh, by doing. Mm -hmm. And we are definitely focusing on it. Uh, in fact, this year we're thinking about switching our symposium into a more hands-on approach. What do we mean by that? We want to have like a day of workshops. Um, we just rebranded the event. Uh, we're very excited. We're working on the roster for, mm -hmm. for that event. But other than that, all the events that we have so far, like with Professor Greg Twees, which has an amazing resume. He was an ex-IDO, a Cisco professor at, at the Pratt um, School. He has helped us to make up the events so people could solve problems. In the last one, it was the, the exercise that we did with him is it was forcing students how to solve the problem of blood donation was. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a great experience because it is, uh, it is an issue that most people do not have any knowledge about, but how do you come up with all the perspective and how to solve that problem? And using this methodology is actually brought up some interesting ideas that maybe in the future someone can use it um, regarding blood donation, or maybe someone <laughs> could use like methodologies for, for their own career. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we have a team of people that are dedicated to the experiential learning um, part of the events and this is like the cornerstone of the club I think um, this is what makes us a special that is not we're not giving only classes or extracurricular classes mm -hmm. it's only more the more than that it's just learn mm -hmm. by doing as I said yeah and so for example one of the things that, that we did for the first time last year I led a session on what design actually is and I'm betting a lot of you who are listening to this have, have heard about design, about design thinking, about innovation, um, but there's still maybe a question on what design, act, what does it mean and why should MBAs care? So we held a session last year uh, around that uh, and we really tried to always add the experiential learning and the hands-on aspect to every to every event. Um, so we would stop for a second, have people do an actual exercise, apply a design thinking tool, um, because I think it's, it's very interesting. Um, I think 
a lot of times we grow up and we feel like we're not creative. Oh no, like I cannot be a designer. Like I'm not creative. I cannot paint. I cannot draw. I cannot like... I'm not creative. But then when you get people actually using these tools and methodologies and these structures, they're like, oh, wow, actually, I came up with a really cool idea that I I never thought I could come up with, right? So so we really want to build people's creative confidence um, so that they realize that being creative and being a designer, it's, it's, it's not just about be, uh, being an amazing visual designer and designing something that looks pretty. Being a designer is so much more broader than that. It's, it's basically solving problems uh, in a n- unique way that allows you to create innovative paths forward, right? Um, so we really want to make sure that students leave our, our workshops not with like, oh, this is something interested, but I could never do this myself, but saying like, oh, I actually tried something out today and I came up with something really cool and and build that creative confidence and, and give them hands-on chances to, to apply some of these methodologies. Right. And also like leverage on design to convey messages. Uh, like we have the session for the crash course, design crash mm-hmm. course that will help a students who are just about to go to their internships or their full-time offers, how to create a, a better PowerPoint, which is very important like for people going to consulting yeah. or, or maybe CPG. And not only that, we also have the, the, the event of uh, a presentation your brain will love. Yeah, at the end of the day, having some ideas of, of visual design is very important. Uh, <laughs> so, so we do try to, to give students the, the opportunities to, to learn those skills as well. Um, and the final bucket that we have is around careers, right? So we want to make sure that the, that the club supports those people who are interested in pursuing careers around design and innovation. Um, and, and that we, we, as a club, give them the tools they need to to navigate that successfully um this also um has has a piece to it that's not necessarily careers but how the club is able to uh, make design more present in the fuqua experience right so right now you can see there's some classes that touch upon design thinking and are around innovation but we don't necessarily have a specific design thinking class Um, And the club really wants to make sure that the students get that academic experience and those possibilities. So so that's been one of of the club's big focus this year, how we have these conversations with with the administration and with the faculty in order to to better provide those opportunities for students. so those are our four focus areas. Um, and then the last thing that we wanted to talk about was a little bit of, of how recruiting looks like for, for somebody in this club. Um, so as I said, this club is very cross-disciplinary. And the reality is that the, the amount of students who want to specifically re- recruit for design innovation is not that big, right? Uh, yet last year, we probably had like four students who were really, really interested in recruiting for design. What we've seen is without a doubt, uh, there's been an increase year after year. So when I think about our third years, maybe there was one or two people who wanted to recruit for design. I think about the first years um, that are are currently here at Fuqua. There's, I've had conversations with about six or eight students who are very interested. And as co-presidents, we often have conversations with people like you, with prospective students. Um, and, and we've definitely seen an increase in the desire to actively recruit for design. Um, so although this is something that honestly is, is still quite new, right? There are other clubs that, for example, that consulting club, like consulting has existed for years and years and years, and they have a very clear roadmap as to how to prepare students to, to enter a field in design. The big consulting firms come on campus and they recruit here. It's very different for us um, because first, most of the work for, for design consulting is done off campus. Um, so something that we're trying to do is how to help students manage that and with the help of the CMC, how, how that off-campus process goes about, um, how to do networking with these firms, how to provide students with a, even just a list of firms that, that they might be interested in, firms that do hire specific MBA opportunities. There are other firms that don't necessarily have MBA positions, but we could be well, well suited for, to work at those firms. Um, and for example, I did 
recruiting for, for design specifically. And I did get um, an internship at a design thinking consulting firm in New York called Academy. Um, so to be completely honest, it was, it was not the easiest process, right? I think what I've realized is that design, the design industry knows it needs business and the business a business knows that it needs design. And you can see that, for example, in the past years, almost all big consulting firms, I think except Bain, have bought a design a design firm. And even Bain has like their own incubator and their own innovation practice um, because they're seeing what? That their clients are coming in and saying, oh, I need design thinking, I need to, to innovate, I need to do new things, I need help. Um, and they've instead of building that that um, capacity in-house necessarily they've bought design firms to help them um, to help them develop these skills and offer these services to their clients so design is only gonna become more important there's still in my mind and this is my own personal opinion there's still a gap there and and I mean it's not the most traditional MBA path though I think it's gonna become easier it's gonna become more ubiquitous um, and it's 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 hopefully going to become easier for MBAs to recruit um, at design firms. That being said, um, I do believe that there is that there is a lot of room for MBAs in in the design industry, and and the club really wants to make sure that for those students who are interested in pursuing this as a career path, that we provide them the support and we and we have and we build that we bridge the gap. So, for example. Um, I had an interview with IDEO last year. There's a student right now who, who is interviewing for IDEO. Um, so how do we collect the, that information and how we, how we create some guidebooks to, to help students that might be in that position next year to be better prepared um, for these types of interviews, which are different than traditional MBA interviews. Um, so, so recruiting for design, I think, is definitely a possibility. Um, and I encourage anybody I... If you have questions about this, reach out to me. Like I've been there, um, and I really think that MBAs who are interested in design, we should stick together um, because we're honestly not that many. <laughs> and I just, I think it's important to to help each other out as we as we navigate this this uh, non traditional path. Um, we also wanted to kind of talk in general about um, some general recruiting tips. Right. Um. Uh, Mariela mentioned that the recruiting process for design was um, kind of complicated. You will see that recruiting for any <laughs> career path is complicated, uh, but it's not the end of the world. Fuqua provides you with tons of possibilities, tons of tools that will help you and will guide you through, uh, regardless it's um, for consulting, uh, finance, banking, whatever you do, you will find that you have the people that will help you and the tools. Um, I felt in my case that the most valuable asset that you have here at Fuqua is your classmates and the people that are one class above you. Um, let me elaborate a little bit on that. <laughs> that. Uh, while I was struggling, I, kind of, um, I was very open about it. Um, if I had concerns, I, I always reach out to someone and there was always someone that had a little bit of time in their schedule to maybe just sit and had coffee with me or maybe send an email to introduce me to a recruiter or maybe just do a mock interview. Uh, you will see like your classmates or people that already went through it are the, the best help that you could get and you will have more than more than enough help of that uh, of that kind here at Fuqua. Um, yeah, I think I think that's very important that whatever you do, even if you're trying to do something non-traditional as, as design is, you're 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 not alone. <laughs> here um in in pursuing that and and the more like for example i i learned a lot during my recruiting process that now i want to transmit to the incoming students who are interested in this so um giving some like specific tips on on recruiting for design so something that that students have to do is build a portfolio now what does a portfolio look like how do i build a portfolio what do i include uh, this is something that that um that other career paths don't have to do. So it's, it's less clear, it's a little bit fuzzy. Um, so, so the club is really trying to help students navigate that process, that it's something very new that other recruiting paths don't require, um, right? So, so for sure, you're not gonna be alone, <laughs> you're not gonna be alone ever at Fuqua um, in, your, in your desires to, to, to recruit in whatever it is that you wanna recruit. 
Um, another idea that that we're kind of working on, it's, it's still a little bit a little bit raw, but we're working on it is how um, how design thinking and having this mindset really will help students even in their like product management interviews or in their consulting interviews and how we can leverage some of the skills to help students that are doing more traditional uh, career paths really stand out in their job search um so so yeah we're we're i think given the the increase of the amount of students that are interested in recruiting for design the club is definitely moving forward with a lot of things and 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 creating a lot of things from scratch uh, but it's pretty exciting because we've seen we've seen traction, which is which is which is always good, right? Um, so, and I, just talking with the prospective students that I've talked to throughout this year, there are so many of you that are interested in design, um, and I just want to make sure that that me personally and the club as a whole can really support you. And and there's a lot of stuff that I think you can do before actually coming to business school because you'll see once you come to business school time is tight you're gonna have a lot of stuff to do and it's harder to carve out those those moments to do those things that are expected of you that are not expected of anybody else such as building a portfolio so any work that you can do prior to coming to business school in terms of figuring out if design is for you talking to designers and, and learning what it is that they do if there's a space for you how your pro profile fits in if design is uh, a short-term possibility or more of a long-term plan how you navigate that um how you look back into your past projects, how do you create hypothetical projects on your own in your personal life to add to your portfolio, how do you develop some of the skills? I think all of these questions, it's easier to think about those before coming to business school than once once you're here um, because business school is, is very intense. It's awesome and I'm, it's amazing, <laughs> but but just time-wise, it's, it's very restraining. So... So thinking about these things in the position that you guys are now, I think is very, very valuable. Um, so yeah, that was like our talk on recruiting and now we uh, can jump into the, into the question. So we have like- Yeah, I've seen that you already have brought us some questions. Feel free to keep on writing some questions. Uh, we do have the first one here is, how should I choose which focus area to get involved in? Um, actually, if you are part of, you, if you are a member of the club, you can be involved in any of it. I mean, like the activities that we do, they cover all the all the focus areas. Uh, if you have to choose one, is mainly if you want to be part of the cabinet. When we form up our cabinet with second year students and first year students, then is where you would have to pick if you want to be involved with in one of them particularly. Mm -hmm. But as a club member, you're more than invited to be part of any of any kind of the activities that we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and even as a, even as a cabinet member, like you, you could be as a first year cabinet, you could be the marketing and communications cabinet, and and that entails specific responsibilities that have to happen. For example, the newsletter goes out every week. That has to happen. Um, but at least at least under our leadership <laughs> we really we really try and encourage students to 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 be part of the things that they're passionate about and if you're the marketing and communications but you have you're really passionate about um, about i don't know adding design more design to the curriculum then by all means like we really want to encourage students to to pursue those passions and and to really go where they think they're going to be most effective yeah, um, and actually, like w w one of the stories that I remember, just as we started as club presidents and we had our second year cabinet before the new class came in, we did a design thinking session ourselves on how to come up with the activities that we wanted for the year, kind of uh, setting up the the ground for for the uh, our planning process. And it was very interesting. It involved a lot of post its. I gotta say. By the way, <laughs> you should go to our Facebook page, and we have a video of like a time-lapse video of that session it's pretty fun it's like a 15 second video but i encourage you to to look it up because it's pretty fun yeah <laughs> just as a parenthesis <laughs> and well yeah like we kind of uh, wanted to apply what we were talking about in in the decision making process on how to um what would be the approach of the club um and then there are people at least for the second years they they signed up to to whatever things they were most passionate about um which is which is always good so it's very it's very cross-focus area. You're, you're not just like confined to one thing. 
Right. We want to put some emphasis in, for example, someone was very passionate about trying to work towards including design thinking in our in our curriculum. Um, we made sure that that person will carry that flag, lead that ship, and kind of a land what they wanted to do. If there's something that we're passionate about, like there's no sense of putting them to doing anything else. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully that answered your question. <laughs> uh, so we have a question from Luis saying, regardless of the industry, has a club been able to establish relationships with company within the past five years? Um, so that's something that we have been actively working on. Um, I think during the first year, so something that, that is different, for example, we, we don't currently have, um, sponsorships. So we, we, f so, um, the consulting club gets sponsorships from all the big consulting firms, uh, and the marketing club gets, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, so this is something that, that indeed we have been working on. We have, for example, we have an alumni at IDEO, um, she works in the in the business design practice in the San Francisco office, um, and we have been in contact with her because she comes every year for the marketing strategy class and teaches a workshop. After that, there's always an event with a club to network with her. Um, uh, so that's that's one of our big ones because because it's ideal. Um, but more and more, and through the symposium, we've we have a lot of contacts with people. Uh, in innovation practices within big firms. So, for example, last year in our symposium, we brought in, um, I think it was the VP of Innovations, if I'm not completely mistaken, from Thomson Reuters. Yeah. Um, she was amazing. Um, so, so I think through right now, we're also speaking with um, with a designer that works at Cisco to bring her in to facilitate a workshop for the club. Um, so more and more, I think through these events and through having people come in as facilitators, we are establishing those relationships, um, and that's always pretty exciting. Um, uh, we, and one of the most important relationships that we currently have is with IBM, uh -huh. um, and they do invite us every year to do a design thinking session on their um, on their studio here in the in the Research Triangle area. You will see that it's amazing. It's mm -hmm. like twenty minutes away from school. Um, and it's definitely one of the events, like one of the highlights of the club. People do love when IBM invites us yeah, yeah. over there. Yeah, and it's pretty cool to go to their studio. And they recruit um, MBAs for internships and for full time. So that's another good relationship. For sure, it's something that that we we still have work to do, uh, especially with with actual like design consulting firms. Um, but. So if you have contacts, let us know. <laughs> but but it's something that, that's been growing over the past years for sure. Uh, we do have a question from Mark. Does the club do any activities to test design ideas? Test how people respond to designs? So, um, so clearly user testing and user feedback is a huge part of design. Um, I'm thinking of the activities that we've done one of the one of the problems that we have is that if if you do a workshop if if it's a three-hour workshop um there's not enough time to build a prototype uh even if it's a very low fidelity one and and bring in users and that logistics is more complicated that's one of the things we wanna we wanna um, change at the event that leo was talking about the the new our new design symposium which is going to be called the fuqua design innovation collab which we're going to host for the first time this year um so one of the workshops that we want to do that day is actually an eight hour workshop with a smaller cohort of students to go through the design process end to end so the idea is to go out into the duke community and solve an actual problem there from start to end so from empathy and discovery uh, all the way into building a prototype and getting user feedback um, that requires a longer, a longer, uh, a longer space um, and, and more time than just a, a two-hour workshop. So we're definitely working on this because, as we said, like it's one thing to hear about user testing; it's another thing to actually do it. But I'm, I, I am gonna say, Mark, if if this is something that that you're interested in doing and and it, this is like a very specific skill around design that you're interested in developing, the cl the club is here to to if if you join Fuqua and if you and if you come to the club, if you want to do that, by all means, 
as as we've said all along, the club is is very much a white space for you to to do what you want. So if this means um, that you want to do something on your own and have the club support you or if you want to do a user testing workshop and bring somebody in or whatever form this takes, the club is definitely there to support you. So, for example, I one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I, that I worked on during my second year, I really wanted to learn how to use Sketch, a design program. And I wanted to, to hone in on my skills to design a prototype. So I took it upon myself to develop, uh, to apply for an independent study. So independent studies are for credit, um, like experiential learning. I think that's what Fugo calls them, like yep. experiential learning opportunities. So I got a, a, a professor who was a sponsor and I worked with a startup to help them redesign their app. Um, so it was me doing this project where I created the wireframes in Sketch and I designed, redesigned the whole thing and then I built the prototype. And now we're at the stage where we're getting some user feedback on the prototype that we built to fine tune it um, and tweak it. So this is something that I wanted to learn and, and I had to look for that space to do that. Uh, but there's definitely like so many opportunities for you to, to do that, even if it's within the club or if it's something personal that you'd like to develop. No, and definitely you could feel the support of the faculty. There's like some classes that will help you and definitely the professors will, would be able to, to help you if you want to, like for example, market intelligence, marketing strategy, managing uh -huh. innovation, marketing of innovation. Uh, any of those classes and the professor, I'm pretty sure that if you're passionate about, you know, following like definitely. activities that will tested the different types of design, they will help you with it. Definitely. Um, awesome. So Luis has another question. I know you mentioned that the club is very interdisciplinary. I was wondering if you have been able to see a trend of career path among your members. I got to say the tech par career path is the most common. Um, I think... I don't know if it's because tech is getting a lot of traction within, like all the MBA students, but if we take, as a sample, we take our, our, <laughs> our, our cabinet, cabinet, like you will see that they're going to Amazon, Microsoft, um, even Deloitte Tech. Um, well, yeah, definitely tech, I would say, is the most common one. Yeah, but this is very empirical, right? We, have, we haven't we have really, we'd have to track like every one of our club members and something that happens in Fuqua that is different from other schools, I think in other schools you have to pay to be a member of the club. At Fuqua, you don't. You just you just join the OrgSync page. Um, so so we're getting new club members all the time. But it would be an interesting study to actually keep track of the career aspirations of everybody in the club and see right. if there's some trend there. And well, and actually, I think it's also related because we have, do have a lot of co-sponsor activities with the tech club. And actually, some of the cabinet members are both cabinet <laughs> at the tech club and at the. Design Innovation Club, which is interesting. It helps give us the perspective and helps, you know, get the wheel turning in terms of collaboration mm -hmm. with other clubs. And I think consulting is also is also a big one. As I said, like all of the big consulting firms are doing things around design innovation. Um, so even if you end up um, at a job that as a generalist consultant, you'll probably at some point work on a project where you have one of the new ventures team or the design team working with you. Um, so more and more, I, I, a lot of people came back from their internships being like, oh, at McKinsey, they have Lunar and there was this really cool project. I want to learn about it. Um, so I would say that, that consulting is also, is also a big one. But even like, it's, it's, even CPG, marketing. Um, There's a, also a lot of people from the HSM program mm -hmm. in healthcare. Um, I'm guessing if you're a product management, a product manager, no matter what company you are, these are definitely like a skill set that will help you. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. So those were the questions that we have. Um, there seem to be no other questions. For sure, if you if you go to Google, maybe some of you have already accessed our OrgSync page. Um, if not, if you Google Design Innovation Club Fuqua, I think it's the first the first result um, and there's a contact um, uh, form there so if you write us it will come to our emails and we can keep this conversation going as I said 
design is all is only gonna get more important and MBAs who are very very passionate about design I think we have to stick together um, I've loved having conversations <laughs> with prospective students and with people who are really passionate about this so so definitely keep in touch good luck with the application process or if you're already in uh, good luck with your decision making process Fuqua is amazing <laughs> is amazing um and and we hope you the very best and keep in touch yeah hopefully this session was very useful for you guys uh we did it like very we're very glad to be part of of kind of this admission process for you uh we know it is a big decision that you have right in your on your plate right now um as Mariela said good luck with it and please feel free to reach out and via our webpage. <laughs>